You know, there's that famous rock band, The Who, and they had that hit, Who Are You? And when we face an unknown in analytical chemistry, this is the really big overarching question. What are you or who are you? When we face an unknown in analytical chemistry, the big overarching question is one that needs to be solved. As I've written before and as I've blogged on before, every assay has a limitation. This is just simply shorthand for no one test is perfect. Every test has a flaw and does not present a perfect picture. It always leaves open questions that need to be answered. This is why taking an orthogonal approach towards testing is best. Testing approaches that are orthogonal are if they take a different but non-competing path to solve the same problem. GCMS, or gas chromatography mass spectrometry, is just one type of assay possible to test unknown compounds. It is powerful, but by, not, by all means not foolproof. When it comes to GCMS testing, one important area of concern and a major limitation of that assay concerns the question of stereoselectivity. If you only use GC or EI-based MS as opposed to what Swig Drug calls for, which is a combination of non-complementary methods, to try and elucidate the unknown, then you will not be able to successfully conclude that it is that which is illegal and is commonly referred to, for example, as methamphetamine. Methamphetamine has a very specific definition. It is well known and well published in peer-reviewed scientific journals, but not well known and not well published to defense attorneys and therefore not exposed in court that GCEI-based mass spectrometry, unless a special chiral compound uh, column is used, loses stereoselectivity and the ability to discriminate stereoisomers. In the case of methamphetamine examination, this can be very, very dangerous. Both the L form of L-methamphetamine, or the levo isomer, referred to as the R isomer, and the D-methamphetamine, or the dextro isomer, referred to as the S isomer, have the same chemical formula of C10H15N. They have the same boiling point at 215 degrees Celsius at uh, and have the same molecular mass of 149.233. They are stereoisomers. As GC is primarily a separation technique by way of boiling point and polarity, these two compounds, unless a special and expensive chiral compound uh, column is used, will elute, meaning come off the column at the same time. Without resolution, meaning separation by the time it takes to elute, being achieved between these two clearly different molecules, then you have no separation between these molecules with the same identical chemical formula, but are clearly different from one another. Without sufficient resolution, meaning separation by GC, then we cannot have a valid qualitative measure, meaning that we cannot say that it is this specific molecule to the exclusion of everything else in the universe or uniqueness. However, using GC alone, this is never sufficient to make this call of a uniqueness as there are so many millions of molecules in the world. Based upon GC alone, to affirmatively conclude that only that one molecule to the exclusion of every other eludes at that specific time and is unique to it as a scientific fib and conscious editing or over-reporting of the scientific truth. This is where the powerful but not foolproof hyphenated technique of GCMS comes into play. Now, the particular power of GCMS in the traditional sense is that if and only if you separate, then you could possibly prove that uniqueness based upon electron impact method of MS to produce molecular fragments with logical loss from the parent compound that can be compared against the known and refereed standards such as by NIST or Sigma Aldridge and others. As the GCEI based MS cannot discriminate between stereoisomers, and the L and the D are most definitely stereoisomers of methamphetamine, the machine loses the ability to be selective between these stereoisomers unless, of course, that chiral compound is, column is used. They cannot tell the difference between the two. Here's why it's so very dangerous and can lead to false convictions. The L form has a very little pharmacodynamic effect on a human being, whereas the D form will really make you have an interesting couple of days in terms of methamphetamine. The L form is known as the L form of methamphetamine, and it's the levo 
uh, type of methamphetamine. The problem is that the L form is completely legal and exists in a lot of different commercially available products such as Vicks VapoRub inhaler, for example. In fact, in every single one, there's 50 milligrams of the L form in the typically commercially available package. It is a common uh, vasio constrictor. And how many crime labs only use GCMS? A lot. So they're misreporting this because they aren't specific enough, aren't selective enough, aren't doing other complementary tests uh, from non-competing methods and taking an orthogonal approach. Shame on them for not doing it the right way.